Ramachandra from the NR Media, NR Hour Sports Show. Happy Friday. Back with another episode. New month here, December 1st, which I can't believe it's almost end of 2023. And uh, as we look forward to uh, another new year coming up pretty soon here, it's, it's going to fly by. But uh, we are back with another exciting episode. Uh, yesterday, fans, everybody know we had uh, we, uh, Wyatt Eckler on the show yesterday. So go check out that episode. That was a good one. But today we have a, uh, another baseball guest on the show here. Uh, but before we uh, introduce our guests, uh, fans, everybody know, everybody knows about the speaker app. You can join that app on my phone where you can ask questions uh, as usual. And uh, we are live on iHeartRadio, Spotify also. So please tune in on those two apps. Uh, but today's guest, his name is Kevin Mensch. He's a former MLB outfielder. Uh, what a great career, man. He a uh, great uh, MLB stats, MLB career, uh, underrated player in my opinion. Uh, whoever doesn't know about him, he brought t- intensity. He brought a passion to the game, and uh, he he made some amazing plays in the outfield. So, uh, without further ado, Kevin, thank you for joining the show. And by the way, before we get started, he also played in the Japan League, uh, which is interesting. So we'll get to all that. He played for the Texas Rangers, the Brewers, the Blue Jays, the Hessian Hessian Tigers, and the Washington Nationals. So he had a he had, he had a long, great career with different teams. So we'll get to all of his that all of that, and he's also the ho- the head host for his podcast, the Big Head Podcast. Go go check that out. Uh, we'll get to all of that. But Kevin, like I said, thank you for joining us. Happy Friday, and how are you and your family doing? We're good. Just trying to wrap things up here for the holiday. I think we got a couple more weeks of school. Actually, headed to son's basketball tournament here in a little while. So it's it never ends with three kids running around. <laughs> yeah. So uh, tell tell our fans right off the bat, uh, you play with Texas Rangers. So what was it like seeing them finally winning their first uh, World Series after 52 years? You know, for the fans that have been here since 72, those are the ones that that it really, you know, the ones that you really feel for because you know they have that longevity of how of, of what it's been you know there's granted there's those bandwagon fans that just jump on and i'm sure they'll jump off in a few years so but the ones that have been here through you know through thick and thin those are the ones you feel for those are the ones when we go out in public you see them and then they recognize you and they just you know just hey you know how'd you feel you know i said i'm more happy for you guys because you know you guys had to endure this you know i wasn't a rangers fan growing up so, but I understand that that pain of under, of seeing that, but seeing the enjoyment and you know, and um, just how excited they were. I mean, canceling school so they could go to the parade. You know, kids that you know, you might never see this again, especially in their lifetime. Some might, some may not. You, you know, you never know. So it's, but it was great, like I said, to see them um, and just and just hear that, just hear, just you know, it's almost they like could breathe, uh, you know, a sigh of relief of finally we were able to, you know, to do it. You know, if they're all the the what ifs, you know, the could have beens and everything else. Mm. Yeah. So tell our fans, how did Kevin Mensch get into baseball and uh, who, who, who would you say your uh, biggest influencer was in that? I had two older brothers that played college ball. Uh, so, you know, as, as the baby brother, you're, you want to be, be like them, monkey see monkey do. So whatever they were doing, I wanted to do it. So they're 10 and 14 years older than I was. So I wasn't cut slack as a kid, you know, so I'm, you know, I'm five, six years old. I'm playing with 16 and, and 20 year old in my backyard doing stuff. So I was, as a kid, I was abused, but I wasn't cut slack. I was, it was here, you know, and I think that that helped. And then as, as I progressed through my brother's play, I never played football. My school wasn't known for football high school until, until recently I played soccer and I played ice hockey. My brothers played basketball. So we didn't have that. Also, I'm left footed. So as a kid, my brothers were right footed. So they used to hold my left leg and try and get me to kick with my right. Mm. So I was just, you know, I was pushed on a bike down the side of the hill by the house. Here, here you go. Learn to ride your bike, baseball. It was throwing everything I could playing hockey. I was the goalie with the old catcher's equipment. Right. And oh yeah, that stuff would sting. Um, but I think that kind of the mentality I had with that, you know, growing up, growing up just outside of Philadelphia from Delaware, doing that and being a blue collar city, I've always been, been that way you know I have people say you know hey we love love the way you played I said I just hope you got your money's worth you know mm-hmm. that's just the philosophy I've and that I think that's one of the biggest things that's gone from this generation of athletes is is that mentality of you know go until you until you can't anymore you know at 20 years old I didn't think well how's my body gonna feel now now I think they're oh I, I might feel this way that you know you leave it you you always play every game like it's gonna be the last because one day it will be mm-hmm yeah, so talk about uh, you grew up in Delaware and uh, near Philly area, and talk about the 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 uh, the, the the sports uh, back from back in the day when you were growing up, and talk about being part of the the history in Philly growing up there. I mean, 
you, you know, everything in sports seems to be cyclical, mm-hmm. right? The early, you know, early eighties to mid eighties, you know, the Philly, Philly teams were, you know, always in the postseason, you know, world series, NBA titles and stuff. And then it, then there was a lull, right. And then it comes back to it. So, you know, as that's, that's just, you know, I talk about the fans here of, of enduring that, of being able to, um, you know, of, of how that feels, but just being enamored and how it was. So Delaware's kind of it's split in the middle of the state. You really, it was, you know, it's just like anything. It depends on what you got on TV. I grew up 20 miles outside of Philly. So I was getting all the Philly stuff mm-hmm. downstate. You were getting your Baltimore uh, and, and, and all that stuff. So in Washington and everything else. So it's kind of divided that way. So, but as, you know, as a kid, it was just, that was just, you know, what you wanted to do. You know, like I said, I loved hockey. I'm a hockey guy. I grew up. Yeah. So big flyers fan doing that you know i got a chance to play you know play against like and then seeing those guys especially now you know on the on the end of my career and now but being out and seeing these guys if wait those are guys that i watched growing up right and those are my you know guys that i looked up to to do it you know mike schmidt was my favorite philly growing up tim kerr was my favorite flyer mike quick my favorite eagle Mm -hmm. and you know charles barkley my you know as a sixer i'm not a basketball guy but you know i'll watch so Mm -hmm. i just and seeing that and then finally get a chance to meet these guys and just, you know, you think as a kid, you're five, six years old, you're, oh my goodness. And then here they are. But that's, that's one of those things too, that you kind of motivates you to go, you know, Hey, I want to be like that guy. You know, what do I need to do? You know, what do I need to do? And I think that's another thing that's lost from this generation. They don't want to, what do I need to do? They just think, Oh, I watched it on TV. I'm automatically better. Well, Hey, those are, those are great names to follow. And uh, obviously all those players had great careers with their respective teams. And, um, but talk about tell our fans, did you ever think of playing hockey instead of baseball? I see when I so growing up, as I get into high school, it got I think it was 14, 15. My parents finally said, Look, you've got to decide, you know, baseball or hockey. And I always tell people bus rides across Canada, bus rides across the US. <laughs> so so I, you know, chose the baseball route. A good friend of mine that I grew up playing hockey with and baseball actually won a Stanley Cup with Pittsburgh in 2009. Uh, Mark Eaton, he and I both got inducted into the state hall of fame at the same time. I called, I called him and said, Hey, let's, you know, let's go and do this together. So I, you know, could I have gone that route? Who knows? You know, I still love hockey. I love, you know, just the physicality of it, the way the game moves, the flow. Some people can't, they have to go to see it in person. Yeah. I'm just, that's just, that's just who I am. So, you know, to be able to do that, especially, you know, in Delaware, we had, you know, we go out and we have seasons here in Texas. We have, we have, spring early summer midsummer late summer yeah so i mean that, that's it so it's you know hockey is not a sport here really that people are gonna really gravitate to so it's it, but it, just as a kid that was just that was what i loved about it and then doing that for conditioning once i started in the winter and off season i go play hockey and skate around just to get different kind of muscle movement and and, uh, and muscle usage because of you know you said what our bodies go through so that's when i had to make that decision and you know could i play hockey who knows yeah, so sp- talk about um yeah be- uh, before we go any further, fans, please tune in on Spotify, iHeartRadio, and the Speed Grab. Uh, put your questions on the Speed Grab. Well, I'll take uh I'll read off your questions on there, and also we are live with former MLB outfielder Kevin Mench. Uh, so Kevin, talk about uh the the adjustment period for you because uh after you you're in, you're in Philly, then you went to Texas to begin your career. So talk about the adjustment period from going from the cold to the heat. So growing up, I'd never been west of the Mississippi. Mm-hmm. You know, playing at Delaware, we'd gone and played. Uh, it's actually went to a regional in Tallahassee my sophomore year. Mm-hmm. No, yes, my sophomore year. Junior year, we ended up going to Fayetteville, Arkansas, and doing that. And then, so growing up, you know, doing that, going up, playing in the Cape. And then all of a sudden, um, here I am going, you know, to the Rangers. You know what? You know, the, I didn't really know much about them on TV. You know, didn't see them. I, you know, grew up outside of feeling a national league team. So you didn't really see a lot of it, you know, Baltimore games here and there, but didn't know much about it. Um, and you come down here and all of a sudden it's, you know, you realize, you know, how big this is, you know, how far. And uh, once you get to my, I think my first time to, to actually be here was after was, I think it was 2000. We had this career development after the draft where they brought us in, you know, you learn to how to deal with the media, this type of stuff. And then we were off to spring training. So that was really my first experience of being here. And, and since then, so I've been here now 21 years. Wow. So it's, it's part, you know, it's just far enough away where if I need to get home, it's a two hour flight home. Yeah. You know, so it's, and it's, it's, it's part, do I mind the heat? I mean, I sweat in the meat locker. So anything over 35 is really, I'm just going to sweat it anyway. 
<clears throat> did you ever uh, throughout your career uh, before we get to your beginning of the career, but throughout your career, did you ever thought thought of a play, potentially playing uh, playing for your hometown team, the Phillies? Throughout, did you ever think about that throughout your career? I mean, as as you you know progress through the seasons, and stuff, you always hear rumors about you know tra possible trades and everything else, and it, it's one of those things that the veteran guys would tell you, hey, don't, there's nothing you can really, it's out of your control. You know, it's not you have a say in doing it, so it's just. And there had been rumblings. They had talked about it. How true were they? I, I don't know. How close were they coming to fruition? Who knows? But, you know, it, it would have been fun. It, I think – so I think our first year when the Interleague started, which was, I think, 04, we go to Philly. But it, it's a lot when I go home because, you know, going to Baltimore, it's – we you know, we go a bunch of times. So – and I was – like I said, I wasn't a Baltimore guy, right? I was a Philly guy. So we go to Philly, and all of a sudden, you know, everybody's – wanting your you know your attention you've got so much going on and it's kind of it's hard to focus so it was you you wanted to be there but at the same time you were like okay you know it's hard to focus because every even people in the stands you know they'd say something that would remind you of high school and you know and it's just it it was tough but I, would i love to absolutely i mean that's just that's who i grew up you know where that's the uniform that i always wanted to as a kid it's just like anybody i want to be a, a doctor or a police officer. Oh, i get to finally wear that no i didn't didn't get to wear my Phillies jersey with my name on it, but it, but I got a chance to play there, so I do it. And then we did in college, we would get a chance to play at Veterans Stadium, the, the concrete turf uh, through the Carpenter Cup, and doing that. So you you know you got a chance to kind of be around that 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 aura that 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 it had, but but just not the same as actually putting on that uniform. Mm -hmm. So we have a fan question here that just popped up on my phone. Um, so, someone wants to know some uh, what are what would you say some of your best moments were in your career? Oh gosh. I mean, my, I think one of the biggest thing, my first year I hit my, my first two home run game, my rookie year was in Wrigley field. So being able to do that, to be there, you know, seeing the Ivy um, walk in those tunnels that Babe Ruth actually walked down. I mean, those, the tunnels, no wider than your shoulders, yeah. water seeping through the walls and everything else. And seeing that and just, and being able to do that um, and being able to do that. And then also, you know, then Yankee stadium and, Fenway all in the same, you know, all in the same year doing that. So, I mean, it was one of those years. And then always people talk about the home run streak, yeah. you know, the seven games was, um, was fun. Was it something I really thought about? No, you know, in hindsight, I always tell people what I've should. Yeah. Maybe I would have tried, but I wasn't trying to do anything different. You know, what should I have? Well, maybe so, right. You can always look back and go, ah, that, that would have been a good pitch to swing or that would have been, but that would, how would that have helped my team if we're losing, you know, so it was one of those things. And then record was, was tied by Mike Trout. He's a Philly guy, South Jersey kid. His dad went to Delaware as well. So, you know, I know his dad. So if anybody did it, that would have been, you know, it's, it's great. So, you know, he tied the record in Cleveland where I set the record. So, oh, wow. you know, I haven't had, I haven't had a chance to talk to him about it yet. Um, but seeing that and doing that. So, I mean that, and then I, somebody else showed me a statistic. Um, I had a, I hit a home run in three straight innings hmm. one time, I think in 05, maybe. 0405 oh, oh, and it's only the second time in American League history it's ever happened I mean you know that's another thing who, who even thought about doing that but I mean I've you know I've seen guys hit home runs in a couple innings but three straight innings I just never would have thought of something like that so but doing that you know being able just to to see guys that you know you have posters of on the wall you know I grew up having Frank Thomas poster on the wall and, and seeing that I remember telling uh Frank about that just going you know I see you on my wall and here you are I mean larger than life and now i'm on the same field as them yeah right and I, like i said i was even though i was on that level i was still a kid mm -hmm. of I, i'm still that way when we go out you know hey i'm all i mean you see my autographed baseballs back there i've got jerseys yeah, i like your backdrop mm -hmm. and, they, if, and footballs and everything else so, i mean i've got all kinds of stuff that i just i like to collect i'll give it to my son i'll pass it on to him so i've always just been i've always been a fan about stuff you know that's that's just that's just how i am because of the you know, I think this that's lost with today's generation. Oh, yeah. you, know, you can't know where you're going until you know where you've been. So knowing the history, mm -hmm. uh, Jim Tomei came in town. We had our charity or had our golf event for our alumni. And he goes, oh, wow. yeah. he goes, I talk to guys and, they're, and they go, uh, who are you? I mean, that's <laughs> what I mean. It, it's, oh, hold on, I got to Google it. As opposed to, even though you don't know, but going, wait, you're, you're, I know something, right? That these, this generation just. They don't know. Like they got to, like, like. See, uh, I, I've been in media for three and a half years now, uh, uh, covering games. Like we, we cover a lot of stuff. And the one thing I learned in this business, you got to do your research, 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 research. I already know about you because I, I've seen, 
I, I know players that I see some players that you play, but still playing, but, um, but I, I've seen um, your highlights, and also I, I've known your name for a while. You play, you play with some known uh, other players that I know also. So you got like I always tell people if you want to be in this industry, you got to do your research. That's the main thing. Yeah, I mean, it, it, regardless of what it is, of just knowing because and and that's how you learn. Like I said, I was, had older brothers, so I always gravitated towards the older guys. And I was fortunate enough playing my first few years. I had you know I had the Pudge Rodriguez, the A Rods. Paul Maros, Kenny Rogers, um, Herbert Perry's, Jay Powell's, uh, you know, Mike Chan Hope Park, Kevin. Yeah. Well, I came up with Mikey. Oh, you, you know, as far I'm talking about the older guys. Yeah, oh. I've known Michael. So we played together in the fall. We started in the fall like in 2000. And so, I mean, I've known Mikey forever. But those older guys to kind of really, you know, and learn from them, right? The history of the game, you know, hearing stories, just sitting back and listening and hearing stories about that, you know, that that's the beauty of it. I mean, you look at guys at games now, whether it's, it doesn't matter what, you know, NFL, I can understand, right? They're looking to see a route or something, but yeah. baseball, hockey, they're looking. I've seen guys in the NHL, right? They pick up their iPad and the guy next to them grabs yeah. it and throws it. Yeah. Right? The only way to really to to learn about the game is actually sit there and watch, get a feel for, get a feel for the flow. You know, this, like I said, this whole, like I said, I can go on a whole diatribe about how, how it's just, I mean, Tom Brady made a comment, I think, the other day, even with oh, yeah. football. How it, of course it has, because these guys don't know how. They're they're not um, uh, proactive, they're reactive. they got to be told what to do. What, you have to, right? There's no thought that goes into it. And it's going away from the game, but hopefully with any, any sport, you've got this, you've got the old school or the new school. You know, what won the World Series this year? Old school baseball, you know, with, with Chris and with... Uh, uh, with Boach and those guys and Mike Ma and Maddox, that old school guy, they bought into it, right? This launch angles crap and analytics are destroying baseball. You know, it's the only sport it can really screw with. And they're look at what it's done. It's even the guy, I mean, if you look at it, these rules, they've tried to change to bring more people to the game who could really care less. Yeah. So, like I said, I go, I go on for hours talking about that. <laughs> yeah. That, I mean, he, uh, I actually, Speaking of rules, the rules. Kip when Kip Kip was on the show the other day, he said he doesn't like the rules. I he uh, the pitch uh, the pitch clock. If you he said that the 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 unique uh, what do you call it, the the historic uh, like at bats that happened in the past is if he feels like it won't happen anymore because of the pitch clock. So yeah, I had to talk with uh, with Bryce Harper opening day. We were mm -hmm. talking about. It. I said I said what are your thoughts? It's it's terrible. You know that there's a bat two years ago in the in the LCS in the bottom of the eighth inning, right? You got 20 seconds. Well, he's trying to gather himself, right? This is a, a this is a, a defining moment for the series for the teams, and you're going to get rung up because of a pitch clock. Yeah, you know, I mean, that, that, that's what are you doing? You know, guy guys don't don't like it. You know, people go to the game. You know, you pay three hundred dollars. I want to sit there. You want to you want to be home in an hour? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I want to watch a game. You know, they go sit down, they go get a drink, they come back. I missed three innings already. Yeah. Right. That, you know, the bases that are size of pizza boxes, you know, uh, great. You know, Ronald Cunha said, did a record. That's great. You know, hey, you know, congrats to him and anything else. All right. Put Ricky on those bases. He steals 100 probably in the first half of the season. Yep. Doing it. You know, these rules, you can only throw over so many times. Um, you know, I'm trying to think what other stupidness they, they're, that they're trying to do. I think, um, they're trying to do some robot empire. Right? Oh gosh, yeah. I don't know. I don't really. Like yeah, it. I mean, I get it. There, there's, there's times for it, but I mean, instant replay has made its way down to literally twelve year olds with instant re. Are you kidding me? What are we teaching this generation? Yeah, everything's under. We get. We, you know, the, the human element is right. You know, the bo oh, the box that's in the field on the field, right? That's not even on the plate. It's about eight nine inches in front of the plate. In there, well, that's been a strike here. No. So now these umpires are under you know under scrutiny of how of how they they're supposed to do their job, as opposed to all right right I've had umpires, you know come when I've gone up and said hey miss that last one hey that's great I, hey I get it it's cool we all make mistakes doesn't mean I won't gripe or something but at least they understand that they made a mistake, you know now it's can't do that you, you can't take out guys at second base right you can't take out you can't run the catcher, mm -hmm. right I had I had Zani on the show one day and we talked about it. I said Zani that had been you. There, we'd still be doing. He goes, oh yeah, but because it was Buster Posey, you know the the breakup rule, the double play. I get it, right? You're trying to protect guys, but it's an occupational hazard. Yeah, that's a part of it. That's a part of it. You know what? What are you doing? Let you know if somebody's going to do something stupid like that, 
then you find them and then you can you know continue to multiply the fines every time until a point where all right you're gonna you're out you're done you know guys but we can't even police the game anymore even the umpires will say hey it's out of our hands you know now you've got stuff that's festering for a year so it'll be interesting to see what happens with uh with houston and texas next year about the whole incident so right if they had just let the next whatever happened go so we'll you know yeah but that's what you're doing you're creating this this monster of here it is and then they're gonna go well you're all out of here they're gonna throw everybody could have been already handled so you know fighting in hockey let it happen let Let it let them fight right the instigator rule. really come on (laughs) that's right gretzky played during that era he set 61 records I didn't see him complaining everything else. And now these guys have all these rules and they're not going to touch his records, but we have, like you said, we're trying to bring more people to the sport. Yeah. You know, basketball worried about load management. Really? (laughs) But now um, with this in season tournament, I, I, I kind of like it because for the NBA, uh, it it gives the, uh, what do you call players? uh, They want players to play more, obviously. And also it gives uh, the teams of small market teams a chance to compete for something in season. Which, um, and I, I like it to to an extent. Um, I'm not like I said. It'll be interesting to see how these the next whatever the next round goes and how and how it's what you know. But are you trying to bring more people to something that nobody really cares about, or what? What is it more? Is it? It's like anything else. It's it's about money. Yeah. It's all about the money of what. How can we generate more revenue? Have guys play. I was reading a stat. Of, they were talking about like Michael Jordan playing at his age. He played 82 games. Yeah. Guys, I need to play. Oh, I can only play 60 this year. Really? You play every other day. Really? I mean, I, I don't I just don't get it. I mean, this it's just the softness of this generation. Ugh. It's crazy. It's terrible. It's terrible. It's terrible. Yeah. So um we, we have another fan question here um on the app. Uh they want to know what was it like coming up with Michael Young at the same time when you guys made your debuts together and also continuing that relationship and um and uh, being uh, like brothers basically so what, what they they want to know what was it like being a teammate of michael young oh my goodness they said mikey got traded over i think in 2000 from toronto and then we first played together in the fall league that year and then he got caught up in 01 the following year and then i got up in 02 and then we being together with him it's you know you you develop this relationship like you said of 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 like of a brotherhood, you know, of, of how, you know, understanding how guys worked, right. He was, you know, I played with Alex who played it short for a while while Mikey was at second Then Alex gets traded. So then Mikey moves over and I play a lot of left. So we always had to have some sort of relationship and communication of knowing because of he's one, the speed of the game, how it's things work out. So, um, but knowing that doing that and just, and seeing him, you know, grow, just being around him. I mean, we're still to this day, you know, we see him and talk to him all the time, just, but it helps. I think it helps because, you know, this, the younger generation can see your relationship with your teammates. Just, you know, just cause you trade doesn't mean that everything's just stops. Yeah. You know, you know, we you said, we're still, still friends to this day. Um, I ran to share it during the world series. I hadn't seen him in forever. He was, right. he was standing about getting a drink and I was like, I couldn't believe I, I hadn't seen yeah. him in forever, but you know, you run those guys, you know, that still, you know, that, that aren't around, but you see them. Yeah. But having that relationship, being able to have fun with it and understanding it, of knowing what to expect, right? He knew what to expect of me. I knew what to expect of him, right? It, it was almost as if you didn't have to say it. They, he just he just knew, you know? So it's, you know, infield or outfield, you always have to have that relationship. And granted, you do have your clicks. You know, the infielders kind of stuck together, well, uh, the outfielders. But I was the guy, I was in in with all of them. You know, mm-hmm. I did, did this, did that. So that was, but having that relationship, I think of all the guys that I played with, you know, he and I have, probably stayed in contact the most just i don't know like maybe just because we've known each other for so long i you know i don't know but but it was but it it's fun you know seeing that you know seeing the success that he had and you know and when he came up all right he'll never be able to play second base okay i'll play second base oh he'll never be able to play shortstop all right play shortstop oh he'll never be able to play third base okay goes and plays third base so whatever was asked of him he did it it wasn't it didn't bother him you know so and he just went about his business and you know, he's had that blue collar mentality. So he was, he, like I said, good buddy. And like I said, we get a chance to see him and stuff. You know, it's kind of, you just pick up, you know, like you hadn't seen each other and, and it's like just yesterday. So I think, I think he still does, he's some, he still does some work with the organization, right? If I'm not yes. Mistaken. Yes, he does. I'm not sure how he's tied in. Uh, he and Kinsler and uh, Darren Oliver do some stuff. Colby Lewis as well. 
Yeah. So Colby is actually the first guy I ever met in pro ball. We were roommates all the way up and to the Colby big league. So. Underrated pitcher, in my opinion. Yep. yep. Colby and I got drafted the same year and came all the way through the organization together. Wow. Yeah. So speaking of, um, yeah, so uh, obviously coming up, uh, you're going to like this. Actually, a uh, couple of years back when I started this business, uh, we had Rafi Palmaro on the show too. So he, it was awesome talking to him. He had some great stories when he was playing and, but when you came up right away in 02, you were you were surrounded by great talent like like Alex Rodriguez, Pomaro. You had uh you had uh your former t- uh, by the way you, you played with uh, Gabe Kapler in Texas and he just got the assistant GM job with the Marlins. So congrats to him if you. Uh, uh, oh okay. Yeah, so uh, they just announced today that uh he's now the assistant GM with the Marlins, Gabe Kapler. So yeah, so gotcha. talk yeah, so talk about the O2 team when you first started and then you, you spent there four years through 06, but talk about the, uh, the evolution of the O2 team that you, you've been a part of and the rest of the year, because uh, you, I, I, at some point you obviously played with Mark to share, but the, the roster changed a lot when you were when, when you, in the four years. Yeah. Cause they had, I mean, they had spent a lot of money, you know, on Alex. And then uh, I think after that, that season coming up myself, you know, Mikey had, had wasn't really established was, was what was there. Uh, Hank Blaylock, um, that, you know, coming through that year. And then the next year, I think Alex, gets, no, I played with Alex. I missed half of 03 because of a broken wrist. Mm-hmm. And then I think Juan was, uh, when did Juan? Pudge left after the 02 season, Pudge. went to the Marlins because that's when he won his World Series. And I, I don't know if Juan left that year as well. Uh, so those guys, but just like you said, but uh, you know, I told you talk about the older guys, you know, so I had, you know, Kenny Rogers and I are good buddies, you know, Paul Merrill, you know, Pudge, different positions, different guys, you know, the outfield, we had a pretty, the Rusty Greer was here in the outfield with Juan, Gabe Kapler, and then, uh, Frank Catalanato mm. that, you know, that year. So we had, but then after that, everybody kind of just went their, you know, really went their separate ways. Then I think after a three, we trade for Soriano, um, and, Chan, when did, I think Chan Ho was, uh, did we sign Chan Ho in a 2002, I think? Chan, Chan Ho Park was here. Um, Ismael Valdez. Yeah. So, I mean, we had some older guys that came in. Uh, Francisco Cardero, Freddy Garcia. No, 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 sorry. Uh, Francisco Cardero you had, and then you had um, uh, Danny's Reyes. Rich yep. Rodriguez. The big sweat, Dennis Reyes. Oh, you had C.J. Nowinski too, huh? Uh, Nikowski, yep, Nikowski. C.J. was here. Yep, Nikowski. C.J. was here. Uh, Ishmael Valdez. Yeah, Joaquin Benoit, I remember him. Yep, Joaquin, Jay Powell, Hideki Arabu. Yeah. Um, gosh, who else? Rocker was here. Carl, I, I forgot Carl Everett was here, too, that year. Oh, wow. Yep, so we had a lot of guys. Herbert Perry. So we had a lot of older veteran guys. And then all of a sudden, they, they went away. And then here comes Teixeira. Yeah, you know Soriano, Gary Matthews comes. Brad, they trade for Wilkerson. You know Lance Nix comes up. Um, Gerald Laird, Barajas is catches is our catcher. You know, so then we had a, a and we had Kinsler coming up. You know, so we had a good knit you know group of younger guys. And we were, I think that 05 season we were in it till the end. I think then that 06 they went and traded for Mill or signed Kevin Millwood. So we were there, you know, just of hanging around that, you know, that, that group that you kind of come through the organization with, you know, those are the guys you build around. I mean, you don't see a lot of that now, this organization, right? Guys are traded and they're signing everywhere else because there's really no loyalty for anybody. You know, that becomes the thing. There's not, you're not going to have any more Tony Gwynn's that are going to spend 20 years and Cal Rifkin's 20 years, Mike Schmidt's 20 years watching these guys in one city. No, you'll get, you know, all right, 10 year deal. Okay. Yep. Yeah, that's the end of the guy's career, but you're not going to spend entire careers now. So as a fan, I can understand how frustrating it can be. Right. Oh, there, where's my guy. Right. I just spent $300 on a Jersey and he gets traded. Right. So now you see more people just putting tape across names and everything else. Right. See, um, yes. Yeah, uh, so here it says Gabe Kapler, uh, now uh, Marlon's assistant GM, uh, they were intrigued by the success in the when he was the player development during his time with the Dodgers. So now right. he gets basically he's getting a promotion, which is amazing. Yeah, yeah, that's good for Gabe. Yep, yeah, play with. I think Cappy set the record for the most RBIs in the minor leagues wow. in a season. Something stupid that he set. I think when he double A when he was in Jacksonville. I think. Hmm. Yeah. So um, he uh, we have another fan question here on the on the app here. They want to know what do you consider. If the if the the right situation is is the right timing for you, but would they want to know would you consider be being a hitting coach or manager or bench coach? 
No. Oh. It's generate, they don't nobody they don't listen anymore. When I played, we had one hitting coach. We had Rudy Jaramillo, who was the best in baseball. Now they've got seven of them. I just it, think of I always think about it. Do kids listen now? I mean, it, so it's just as they they're just older kids that don't listen. Yeah. Right. Because I have everybody has their own guru that does this and does this. That nobody buys into something unless, you know, the manager. But I, you know, trying to coach 13 year olds. Right. I'm ready to strangle somebody. You know, how am I going to do it with, you know, with 25 grown men? You're, you know, you, if you have the right guys around you. Yeah. I want to watch my kids grow up, you yeah. know, doing that and being, you know, so I see guys that are always traveling, doing this, doing that. You know, I've still got kids. I want to I want to be able to walk, be around and see that stuff. So. I mean, I've been asked, you know, independent ball team. Hey, you want to come down here and manage? No, I just, no, I think I've had an, a, enough of the ba that side of it. You know, it, maybe when they're older, would I? Yeah. But I don't know. It's, I mean, think about it. You're gone all the time. Everybody, all you get, everybody sees is the three hours on TV. They don't see coaches getting there at one o'clock and stay until 11, right? Missing stuff, missing, um, you know, kids growing up, grandkids doing that stuff. So it's, it, it's, it's a, it's tough, but I just couldn't, I don't think I couldn't deal with it. I couldn't deal with the personalities and, and everything, the entitlement thing more than anything. Right. I mean, you see it in sports oh, yeah. and everybody's like, hey, look at me, look at what I did. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm this guy. I'm, I'm doing it as opposed to right. Acting like you've done it before. I'm too, I'm too old school. I think, right. You know, Larry Fitzgerald touchdown. Here you go. Yep. yep. Now everybody, Everybody's pointing oh, in football. I got a first down. Okay. Why don't you make a sign when you drop a pass? Okay. We know you dropped the pass. We know you got a first down, right? Just, just, I mean, I, mean, I get celebrations or a thing, but goodness gracious. There's a, there's a, there's a, and I might be, ah, oh, you're old school, blah, blah. Hey, I have respect the game because the baseball yeah. gods don't forget. Right. For sure. And any, any of the sports, right. They know it. Oh yeah. The, the pass, like, the past players, the uh, some players do not like in 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 different leagues. They don't even like how the game is played being played now from the yeah. past. Oh yeah, I mean I know. Like I said, Brady made that comment, and I'm sure people got mad. But just look at the game. You know, he could sit there and go, "Well, why is that guy not moving? Why? Because he wasn't told to, right? Yeah. He doesn't. There's no like I talk you talk about. There's no flow. There's no feel for it. You know what's going to anticipation? You yeah. know, talk about. You know, how about you know what separates. You know, people always ask, "What separates a major leaguer from the from the rest of them?" Yeah, it's not it's not your ability; it's what's up here. You know, being able to make an adjustment this way. You know, I played with some guys that could just mash it in AAA, but they get the big leagues, couldn't do it because it was just they just it it couldn't it couldn't register. And now the way things move, social media and everything else, boom, they've got it just like that. Okay, this is what we're gonna do. Can they make the adjustment? Yeah, and now you have all these guys trying to teach different stuff because oh, that worked for that guy, so it has to work for everybody. Right? What do you think averages are like this? Right? Team averages are in the tank. Mm -hmm. You know what? I think somebody six people hit over three hundred this year, total or something. Six people? Wow. Yeah. Something like that. And it, really, I guess the Mendoza the line is going to become the the gold standard yeah. for hitting. Yeah. <laughs> you build a team around a guy who hit two hundred five with thirty homers, and struck out three hundred and fifty times. But we'll pay him twenty five million a year. I played ten years too soon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So speaking of, uh, <laughs> so tell our fans. I'm just curious. Tell our fans. Um, did you ever think of staying with did, staying with Texas Rangers throughout your whole career? And how tough is it for for you and your family uh, to move from team to team? Obviously, you spent two years with the Brewers, but after that, you went team to team. But how how tough was that for you with the with the movement and all? It's it's it. It's a, it's, it's very tough to do because it's, it'd be like right now, hey, near, uh, go, wait, what? You got to take your stuff. You got to leave right now. Mm -hmm. Wait, time out. You, you're established. You, that's, that's the only thing you've really known right now. You're thrown into this gauntlet, right? It's not as if, you know, once I got to Milwaukee, it was, it was tough because it was a struggle, but then I had the off season. Then I was able to kind of just, you know, reestablish myself mentally and just be prepared for what I was getting into I've known that. And I met Jeff Cirillo. We've talked about that. He goes, yeah, it, it is. It's a tough thing. It's, but it, it's a mentality though, too, to kind of like pinch hitting, you know, some guys I need, I was a guy I need to play every day. Then you have a guy like Lenny Harris who would play maybe twice a week, but that dude could, he could roll out of bed and mash. Hmm. That's just the way it was. And I, and it's the same thing as far as the trade part of it. You know, if you have a family you're established somewhere, 
right? You don't get a chance to say bye to your buddies. No, just grab your stuff and you got to go. You know, then you'll see them in passing after that. So, I mean, it's it's a lot, especially think about it, even if you have kids. I mean, if you're a single guy, you got, yeah, whatever. This is what, you know, if you're getting, if you, you know, if you're living somewhere, you're married, you got kids. Hey guys, I got to leave. I'm out. Yeah. So it's, it can, it can, it can wear on you for sure. And yeah. And then talk, talk about like the transition from uh, being in the U S and you, and then you spend time in Japan and talk about, talk about that adjustment period for you. And uh, after the Bujas, you went to Japan and then eventually came back to, to, to the national, but talk about the move, the adjustment period to, from U S to, to uh, Japan. Have you ever seen the movie, Mr. Baseball? Yeah. Yep. Tom Selleck. That's exactly how baseball is played in Japan. Yep. <laughs> it's run. Yes, it is exactly how it is to, to a T. Yep. You know, you get over there, it's just it's different. And, you know, you get over there and it's, you're trying to learn a whole new system. I mean, it's, ba- it's baseball's baseball, but you've got it's stuff you've never seen before, yep. you know, and that you, and, you, and getting over there and, and it's tough. It's a transition. You know, my wife was pregnant at the time and I'm trying to, you know, go over there. She's here. Right. So you're, you know, your, your priorities and everything else are kind of all over the place. And, it, and it's a lot to take in. You know, guys can make a career out of it. Tuffy Rhodes made a great career out of it. You know, he stayed there forever. So, I mean, you know, it's um, their records, too, is a big thing. They don't like they don't like foreign players breaking their records. They'll mm-hmm. let them tie them, but they will not let them break records. I think oh. Cabrera's tied the home run record, the season home run record. I think Tuffy, I forget what Tuffy did, but they wouldn't, they wouldn't let him. They wouldn't pitch to him. Mm. So, I mean, it becomes very, it's different, um, you know, than those you see a lot of those guys coming over here now with, yeah, yeah. but, but they're the longevity of them. It's, it's different game for them. It's a, it's a really, really different game for them. Pitcher wise, you know, you'll know when they're struggling, they'll say that they're hurt when they're struggling. They want to, that's just the way it is. I mean, that's the trying to think of the last hitter that really had a, a long, I mean, Otani, right. You know, it's been here a few years, mm-hmm. but he's, I mean, Matsui was what here? 10, yeah, 10, 10 years, man. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that kind of stuff. Yes. But for the most part, they have, Oh, these are the next guy. Mm -hmm. They come over and they laugh. I mean, Darvish, the Rangers paid what a hundred plus million for him. And he had what 20 wins, 30 wins, maybe in five years or something. So, I mean, it's a lot because it just doesn't necessarily translate over here, just Mm -hmm. like it doesn't translate going that way. So it's, it's a lot, you know, it's a big, I guess there's another guy, a couple guys that are supposed to come over. Yeah. So, yeah, so Yamamoto is a guy who just got posted. So he's a he's the prime prime prize pitcher this year coming from Japan. And you got I think Hung Poo Lee. Uh, sorry if I'm getting the name wrong, but Lee is a hitter who's coming is getting posted. And then there's another guy I forgot the name, but he's a lefty left-handed pitcher. He's gonna get posted. So potentially you're gonna have three Japan, I think three or four Japanese players on the market this year for teams. Yeah, and you, and you pay the. 50 million just to talk to him. Yeah. The team gets $50 million right away. Okay. That's, I mean, that's just insane. Yeah. You know, is it, is it, is it worth that money? And that's, you know, it's one of those things where you're just, Hey, that's who you guys want to go. And that's, but that's the difference of how, of how the game is played over there and what it means to this. Those guys come up, they're young and, you know, they want to try and they want to post and come over here and do that as opposed to staying over there and yeah. making all kinds of money, you know, it's your own, you know, great. Another, like you said, he came over here and, tore it up because he knew you know played the game right he understood how to do it and that's that's why those guys have the if otani would just hit and you know he could probably have a longer longer career but but the pitchers really don't have that you know they thought dice k was going to be the next you know cy young he had you know a couple good years and right k igawa right with the with the yankees another guy right hideo nomo a couple good years and then he was just okay just average guy so I mean, now Otani's hurt. Is he going to be able to come back and pitch? Right. Who knows? Who knows? So, and like I said, it's a big risk for it. Even even the position guys that do it, mm-hmm. the smaller guys don't. I mean, it, but Ichiro could throw. He could run and hit. You know, oh, yeah. that's the thing. So, and Matsui could mash. He could play a little bit in the field. So, I mean, that's that's it. Are they they're not like they are over here. So, um, we have another fan question here in the app, and uh, they're putting you on the spot. They want to know. Speaking of Otani, they want to know where do you think he's going to go. That's that's a tough question because one is is we well, you know what there's there's he like said there's tremendous upside, but mm-hmm. 
who's this? Is, is he going to come back from Tommy John? Is he going to be able to ever throw a baseball, you know, like he did? Can he come back and DH and hit? Yeah. I mean, Bryce did it and, he, and came back after what, nine months or something of having surgery and playing and doing that. Can Otani do that? Yeah. Is he worth $500 million for the, I don't know. You better have a big insurance policy. You're going to sign him. Mm. So I, I, I mean, you always look at the big market teams, but I think it'll be if those guys like to stay in where there's a big Japanese contingent, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know if Seattle's got the coin for it. LA for sure. Mm-hmm. The Dodgers do and New York, mm-hmm. but other than that, I mean, it, it really, like I said, Southern California yeah, or, you know, New York or Seattle, really, those are just because those guys, you know, think about it. That's where those guys tend to, you know, Chan Ho was there. Hideo Nomo stayed out there. Yeah. You know, Otani was out in LA because it's, it, right, it's close to home. There's a the contingent there. They feel more at home that way. So, and that's the thing. I mean, the, who else? Who's the guy that the Mets signs? It? Maeda? Oh, uh, can, uh, Senga, right? Senga? Senga, yeah. He's what, New York, right? Yeah. So, I mean, there's a, they have, and they're granted, they have the money to spend, but I think it makes it a little bit easier on those guys knowing that, you know, Dice K to Boston, right? They're, you're on the East, right? There's, that's, you don't see them signing huge deals to, I'm going to go to the White Sox. Or I'm going to go to, you know, the Twins. Yeah, right? Granted, they don't have the money, but, but that's the thing. You just see them kind of staying to the coast of, you know, where those, where it is. So I, who knows, you know, you could throw me for a loop could end up with Atlanta or who knows, but I, I see him probably staying out West with the Dodgers, wow. but that, like I said, that's a lot of money to see yeah. because of what, you know, it all depends too on what, uh, you know, what, if, you know, is Trout going to get traded too, right? Yeah. Where is he going to end up? So that could, if he goes somewhere, you know, does that team now have the money to go? So who knows? It's uh, it's a uh, it's a crap shoot for sure. You know, you know who's this, like you said, but if he comes back and hits, I wouldn't pay him three hundred five hundred million dollars. Oh, you know, so Trout to Philly. What do you say, Philly? Both New York teams. Uh, who was one, one or two more? Oh, he, he said, said he's the a Yankees. Stop. He said the Yankees. Yeah. Oh, Yankees, wow. the Mets. You know that's it because it's close to home for him. Yeah, he's South Jersey kid. You know Philly would be ideal, but you notice when when Bryce signed in Philly, he was re- trying to recruit him, and that's when the Angels went and threw that all that money at him. And yeah. <laughs> you know it might be good for him to come home, but what are they going to give up? Like I said, who's that's a, that's that's a lot of token to be eaten at that point. So it'll be interesting to see what what if they do. You know, I, I thought somebody he had said that he wanted to talk with the front out what their plan was. Mm-hmm. You know, are they going to try and resign? T- who knows? So, wow. but it's like what uh, Stanton when he signed that big deal in Miami. Yeah, I, I'll take three hundred million. Yeah, to lose a hundred games a year, you know, spread the money out. Go, you know, go find some other guys. You know, backload the contract or something to where we can win now. Yeah, I'll take three hundred to lose. Get your teeth kicked in, and what he lasted a year and a half, and they traded him. Nope. It's crazy. So, yeah, that's a lot of money to be throwing throwing at those guys. And I, I think he has Boris, right? Otani? Oh, yes. Bo- uh, wait. Well, I'm, I think he has. Wait, is he Boris client? No, I, I got to check. No. I don't think it is. Oh, man. Uh, I know Juan Soto is a Boris client. but Yeah, those guys. What, they try and bring in nine all-stars to try and win the win? And they <laughs> middle of the pack? Yeah, let me see. Sorry. Give me one second. That's fine. But um, in the meantime, talk yeah. T- take us through the. I want to go back to the Brewers team. T- what was that experience like playing with the Brewers in o uh, six and 07? Tell our fans about the experience with M- Milwaukee. That's it's a blue collar town, kind of like Philly. You know, it's kind of just out by the wayside. There's not there's not a lot around there, which is good. I like I like the rural the setting. I mean, I know the the stadium's only a few miles from downtown, but just being like I said. Once I got through that 06 part and being, you know, your spring training with those guys and, you know, being around them, they had a young, good young group coming up. They had Prince Fielder, uh, Ricky Weeks, uh, guys that had been established with there, Jeff Jenkins, yeah. uh, Tony Graffinino. Mm-hmm. Uh, gosh, who else was there? Then I think Johnny Estrada was there, was a guy that was there. Billy Hall. Bill Hall. Uh, yeah. Corey, Corey Hart, oh, wow. uh, JJ Hardy. Yeah, guys, a lot of young guys they drafted that came up. All those guys came through together. So you know, I got to see Prince Prince hit fifty homers that year. Yeah, you know, of, of being around that. And they had some, you know, some veteran guys in the bullpen. Derek Turnbow, um, gosh, dog, I can't. I'm trying to remember. 
Um, Who else we have? Mike got him. Mike got him. No, Mike wasn't there yet. Mike was. Mike came up after. Uh, my my bench coach though was was Robin Young. You know, oh, as, oh. as a, so yeah, that year, uh, with and then uh, Ned was man. Dale Swain was there. Hmm. Um, guys, you know, just a lot of old school guys were around and seeing that. You know, all the time you'd see all those eighty two uh, Brewers guys around. We'd have golf time outings to see all those that group of, you know. Oh, at Harvey's wall bangers. That was a fun group just to be around. You know, you know who, that. You know who's a who is an underrated pitcher that people don't know about? Ben Sheets. Remember him? That's <laughs> I, crazy. I, I, I met Ben yeah. in 98 at Team USA. I've known Ben 25 years. That's crazy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Underrated pitcher, in my opinion. That man could not swing a bat to save his life. Gosh, I talked with Giovanni Gallardo about that a couple weeks ago about how bad Sheets was at the play swinging the bat. <laughs> man it was funny though watch he's a good really good guy he's not one of those guys just had fun doing it you know mm. just go out and have fun uh i forgot you. dave bush was one of our pitchers chris capuano yeah doug davis uh, doug davis was there uh gosh um oh carlos villanueva yep new house villanueva uh mike oh, maddox is our pitching coach there you know so mike i had maddox? Mike Mad Dog was our pitching coach there. Oh, okay. So, you know, just a lot of old school guys, you know, of being around them and seeing that. So it, it was a fun group for sure. You know, I said, like especially seeing all those young guys come up. Wow. Yeah. So uh, we have another fan question here. Uh, they want to know, uh, they, oh, they want to know your, what was your favorite uh, pregame meal or postgame meal? Goodness. I never even thought about post game, pre game or post game meal. I really was just out. Whatever was available, I was going to go eat. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I have you know, each city was was different. I love playing in Seattle, right? You could we could walk from the stadium down to the wharf. They had great seafood. You could walk back to the hotel. You know, always when we go to Philly, you got to get you know get cheese steaks when we're in there. Get Yingling beer. Uh, but the best clubhouse overall was probably Tampa. Mm -hmm. The chef in there on the visitor side, Swanee, was unbelievable. They had the best. I mean, it was it was a giant gymnasium, but the clubhouse there was 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 awesome. It was it was the best, and that was the thing. You know, you got different food in different in different cities. You know, wherever you went. You know, my first time having In and Out Burger, we were in Anaheim, mm -hmm. right? So, and then now all of a sudden it's it's everywhere. So you get stuff you didn't get a chance to get and eat, but yeah, you made the most of it. You know, we go to Baltimore and get crab cakes and stuff. So it's just stuff that I you can't get down here. Yeah, you know, so go to New York, get Italian food. <laughs> Yeah, so we had um actually we had a Tony Tony Gwynn Jr. on the show here. Yeah, I forgot about Anthony Gwynn. I forgot about Anthony. Yeah, a couple of years back we had his son on. You played with his father, and uh, what? what was I played with Anthony. I played with Anthony. Sorry, Anthony. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, you played with Tony Gwynn Jr. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's his dad always called him Anthony. So that's why I called him Anthony. <laughs> yeah. So we had we had your former teammate on the show also. So what was it like uh, being a, a teammate, uh, Tony Gwynn Jr.? It was, I mean, it was, you know, we got the chance to, to meet Tony. He would come around a little bit here and there, but just, you know, you can, you can tell some, sometimes with those guys, they want to, you want to kind of carve your own path. Yeah. I'm Tony Gwynn's kid, but I want to be, you know, I think maybe when, when Tony would talk about calling Anthony, he wanted it to be that way, kind of create his own little path maybe. Um, but just, you know, having that, I mean, heck playing with, with Prince, you know, knowing who his dad was, but you didn't really have those discussions because you weren't sure how, you know, how guy, I know Prince and his dad's had, had a kind of a strained relationship. Um, but with, with Anthony, it was just one of those where, you know, I'd play cards with those guys on the plane. It was, it was myself, Ricky, Prince and, and, uh, and Anthony, we play, you know, play cards and stuff and just, and just talk and everything else. But, you know, if, if any quite, you know, questions about hitting or something, you go, Hey, you know what, you know, what were your, you know, what'd your dad tell you about it? You know, that kind of stuff. But for the most part, it was really just a, you know, just a cool ch a chance just to, just to see him. I think when we went to San Diego, I think Tony came out um, and, do, and, and did all that. I think Anthony now is doing radio for the Padres, mm -hmm. radio or TV yeah, for him. So. With Jesse Agler on yeah. uh, uh, the, what do you call play-by-play -play broadcasting. Okay. So, yeah, so doing that and seeing that and, and you know, um, hearing stories and just, yeah. and just being around those guys. So that's what I mean. That's why it's, it's fun to take that in. Like I said, with those Brewers guys, you know, Dale Swain, all those guys from that 82 team of hearing stories, you know, but of, uh, of just, that's the stuff you can just sit back and relax and, and just take all in. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, here's another question from one of our fans. Uh, this is an interesting one, actually. They want to know, what are some things that you, you never told anyone before? Some things I never told anyone before. I don't think I've ever been asked that question. I'm trying to think of stuff that... Our, our, fan, our fans comes up with unique questions, by the way. Yeah, no, you're you're good. I don't... I mean, I've... I don't know. I don't know. There's, there's stuff to... It's one of those things where after we get off this, it'll hit me. I'll go, oh, <laughs> that's what I should have said. Yeah. But that's just a question I don't think I've ever been really been asked. Right. Mm-hmm. So I don't I don't really have an answer for you. I'm sure there's stuff that I can't really say out here because they don't want to get, <laughs> get guys in trouble. Yeah. Just put it this way. I've played with some characters for sure. Um, you know, John Rocker, a good buddy of mine. We always have some, and just the spiritedness of the conversation we have. John's <laughs> just dude, hey, you know, I mean. He, people know how he is, but he's a good, he's a great guy. He just, just wears his, you know, his emotions on the sleeve. He's going to tell you how it is. And it was fun, but you know, he and Carl Everett, like I said, in the same clubhouse, people thought it'd been a problem. No, Carl's a good dude. I played golf with Carl one day, myself, Carl, Fred McGriff, and Jason Romano. Uh, we, I lived in Tampa for winter and I never laughed so hard on the golf course watching <laughs> Carl play golf. So, yeah. but funny, just, just, just that kind of stuff, right? Around guys and just, and just hearing different stuff, especially guys who played at different eras. Yeah. Everything, you know, how the game was played, what guys did, you know, how they, so, you know, it's, there's a lot of stuff that just, <laughs> but I'm sure, like I said, something will come up after we get off. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, w- I want to go back to your Texas team. Uh, obviously, Pedro Rodriguez, uh, everybody knows about him under uh, one of the best catchers, in my opinion, to play the game uh, up there. He's up there in my, my list. Uh, and also, I want to talk. I want to ask you about Alfonso Seriano because I, he, when he played, he brought a lot of energy, a lot of excitement. Uh, when he's always up a bat, all the fans were re- uh, wanted to see him uh, hit. And uh, obviously, throughout his career, he was like Mark Teixeira. He uh, played with the Yankees also, and he had two sins with the Yankees with Seriano. And then, what what was he like? Uh, tell our fans what was he like as a teammate um, on the field, off the field, and also seeing him go about his business, business uh, every at bat. Soriano, he swung probably one of the biggest bats. I think it was a 35, 34, or something, 35, 36, 30, something, a big bat. You know, the, some of those Latin guys are hard to, hard to understand. So they, he spent a lot of time in Japan. So he knew more Japanese, I think, than he did English. Oh my God. When those guys got around some of the other, like Francisco Cordero and the, and the conversations they would have, <laughs> just just listening to him. So, I, you know, I hit behind Soriano forever. Yeah. So, you know, so we always had a little head, we always had a little handshake we did because of the bald heads. So, but he was a fun guy to be around. Just, you know, he was always had a, he always had a smile on his face. Didn't, he could go out and make eight errors. He, could, he just wouldn't care. He's just like, ah, well, whatever. Go out and then he'd go out and, you know, he'd do that. And then he'd hit a, hit a bomb. He'd just sit there and just admire it. But he said he could run, he could do everything. But he, like I said, he was a fun guy to be around. Um, just to, just to see, like I said, sometimes you just sit back and listen to those, especially when the Latin guys are talking back and forth. Yeah, because they just sit there and have a great time doing it. But he was sort of sorry. Was a great was a great teammate. Um, actually, we share the same birthday too. So, but I think he was a couple years older on his birth certificate. I think somebody came to find out. <laughs> so, so but sorry's a good, really good guy. Like I said fun guy to be around and just you know, like I said had a smile on his face because you you could always mess with him and he would just he would just enjoy any side of it. Uh, we'll take uh, one more fan question here. Uh, someone wants to know. If you were not playing any sports, what would, what would what would you be doing now? If I didn't play any sports, goodness gracious, probably be laying in a gutter somewhere, <laughs> maybe doing that. I mean, I've always, gosh, the athlete in me is just one of those things where something it'd be something competitive, and you know, I don't know what it would be. You know, I just, I mean, am I allowed to pick another sport, or would it just be baseball, or just sports in general? I guess is the question. Yeah. Yeah, so they want to know, like, if if you were not involved in sports, uh, they want to know what 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 uh, what, what, would, what would you be doing? Probably, maybe this TV or radio. You know, everybody says I always have a face made for radio, yeah. so I get on here and, and do <laughs> and do stuff and and talk because, like, you know, you know, I can BS with the best of them, but sitting here listening and just, but like you said, how do you how did I learn? Because watching, you know, I don't watch a lot of baseball because it's painful, but I can have a conversation and talk about it, you know, and you know, what goes through guys' minds and, you know, how, you know, you know, how plays are, are set up, but, you know, not for, but I can't sit there for eight, nine hours a day. I mean, you know, 
I tried. I tried post. I tried put pre and post game one day. It was a it was right after the All Star break with a two hour rain delay, and it was a three two ball game with four hits. And I'm just sitting there. Oh, wait. <laughs> what, what do we talk about now? You know, you're just sitting there. I think I got home about two in the morning. It's Man. like, oh gosh. So I can't. But I can sit here. Like I said, I can talk about this all the time. You get me going about stuff. So I love arguing. I can argue with people at the best of them, as long as it's a spirited discussion where it's just not, yep. you know, where people, pout, you know, because you see those guys online, they just complain. Well, no, it's this. Though it, you don't. You've got to see it from both sides, right? If you only see it one sided, then there's a problem. But if you can have a spirited discussion and not get butt hurt and understand it. You know, he said, like, your cowboy shirt. I'm ready to probably throw this video out the window after after we're done today. But yeah, but that you know what I mean? Being able to have that conversation, you know, you know, with you know, that's just being anything doing that. But that that's the that's the beauty yeah, of it. That's the fun. Yes, that's what being a fan is about, but also a student of it, of the game of understanding. So you know, sometimes these guys go, they start talking, they go way too much into it. You yeah. know, there are some guys I can't stand on TV, there's too much homers of you know everything's you know i call it the tom brady rule everything's not a foul on them but it is on you type of thing where just come on come but sometimes people don't want to hear that right they just they just do this and they blah 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 spit it out so that's probably what i'd be doing just sitting here arguing with people and um just getting them fired up because i could i love getting under people's skin yeah like get in in there start doing the backstroke and people (laughs) start swimming laps yeah like speaking of like when i'm working like when I'm working as media, I have to obviously we have to be neutral. We can't be a fan of a team. So when I'm work, when I'm working, I'm neutral. But when I'm not working, I become a fan. But like it, it, that's what I also learned being part of media, where you got to be neutral when you're working and uh, and uh, and then talk about your facts and the truths. But when you're not working, you can be a fan as you uh, as long as you want. Yeah, and I do that. Like I said, I you know I, there's always three sides to every story. You know what you see, what I see, and what actually you know what should have you know what it should happen so you know but i think you do that and then people just keep it's the same thing they keep spitting out over it come on get to your point move on you know you're just we're spinning tires here sometimes you just got to get off the ride and, and and go so but yeah definitely would do that having that discussion with with people especially that are spirited and understand you know it's hard here in this market because hockey is you know it's- you've got the football right and then you have all right baseball won, so they're up here right now mavs are here and then there's something here, pickleball, probably horse racing, and then probably hockey here. They just don't. And that's the one thing that I, you know, I love hockey. No, really don't know much about basketball. I'm getting into it. I mean, no, as far I never played it, but now getting back into it and then in football. So, but I'm not from here. So it's, that's what I mean. It's, it's hard to do, but you, like you said, you've got to be well knowledge in all of it or to be able to have a conversation, not just get caught with your pants down talking about something. Yeah. So I want to get to your podcast. So tell our fans it's all about the Big Head podcast and when did you get it started? And obviously, as you said earlier, you haven't done it in a while, but you're going to start it back up here pretty soon. You said next year. And um, talk about that and um, what is it and having this platform where you can talk to your former teammates or even have other players from different sports come on the show. It was just one of those things they were talking about. Hey, what's a good name for it? I thought, yeah. I don't know, but, you know, everybody always talks about my big head. So I said, you know, I was thinking about big head Todd and the monsters. I'm like, Oh, what about, <laughs> and then it came about and it, and the podcast really just started where like, you know, this kind of stuff, just sitting here talking, you know, people want to hear, you know, locker room talk, you know, granted there are some things, you know, I respect some guys, especially what they've been through, you know, to not ask, but you know, a lot of the guys you hear uh, different stories um, about, you know, how guys got to where they were, you know, I had Kip on talking before, uh, I've had umpires, I've had uh, BMX guys, just, just being able to sit down and talk. Right. Cause you know, sometimes they get, people get caught in the limelight and they don't get a chance to really just, I don't want them to bring up what, okay. What you can look on Google. Okay. Google says it. I'm not worried about what Google says, you know, you know, how are you feel? Okay. You know, this way. So people kind of understand a little bit more to keep them in, enticed to it. I mean, I get shows on, I can talk for 30 minutes. I think one day Doug Mankiewicz and I talked for almost two hours just oh. because we get on there and just, right. You, you, you catch up one with the guys and then two, you just start talking because they have that kind of same mentality and philosophy of, you know, and then, then, Oh, and then this story will come up. Right. And then, Oh yeah. Then I remember, remember when this, Oh yeah. And this, and then we start talking more. Oh yeah. Remember when, the, and then all of a sudden you look, you're, oh, <laughs> yeah. Man, um, time flies. Yep. We've been, yeah, we've been going at this for a while, but th- you know, do you want to keep going? And then, or do you break it into two shows? So 
I don't, so it's one of those things where I just, you know, you just have fun with it, you know, talking about, you know, different stuff. It could be anything and everything. Yeah, you know, I've had it. actors on, you know, that kind of stuff, just hearing stories about, you know, guys that were athletes, you know, were you an athlete doing stuff? So just trying to have fun with it and, uh, and see, and see where, you know, see where it goes. So like I said, it's been a while. It's, you know, I get the young kids doing stuff. So just trying to I think once after, uh, the new year gets going, uh, probably start it back up again. So, but it's fun. I said, just like I said, just sitting here chopping it up, talking, having a good time and just seeing, uh, you know, what guys are up to and, you know, how things are. Yeah, we had a great, actually, speaking of Doug McAvich, he was on the show also. We had a great convo with him, and he's an awesome, awesome player, another underrated player that people don't know about either. See, that's the thing. Like, when it comes to history, we got to know about, especially baseball. I mean, I love baseball, too, and, uh, and get, like, it's, like, it, it means extra to us because when you get to interview all these players, and um, and plus, you and players love it when you know the history. And, and, and yep. uh, great combos are always the best, obviously, on, on shows, so. Yeah, because sometimes you'll hear something like you said something will come up. Oh, gosh, yeah, you know what? That reminds me, right? And then all of a sudden they start talking about it. you. Let them, you know. I had Milt Thompson on. We were talking about stuff different. You just you know hearing stories about how you know how he was. I had Larry Boa talking about some stuff, you know. So it's just good stuff to see what guys are doing. You know, just catching up because some people go, "Oh gosh, I didn't think he," you know, "What is what he was doing?" And then oh, there he is. So, so but I have fun with it for sure. So a couple more things before I let you go. I know you have a busy coming up, something coming up here. So <laughs> talk about uh, – so you got you guys got the 49ers this week. So I got to ask you, um, are you confident in this game against the 49ers? Because next week is a big showdown against the Cowboys-Eagles again, next week, the following week. But I got to ask you, though, uh, how confident are you against the 49ers? Just the, the biggest thing right now, we you know, you've got a two-game cushion. Right. And, you know, I've looked at the schedule as well to see, you know, you, what your scenarios are and this and that. And it's just, it's one of those things where, you know, it, talk is cheap. Everybody wants to run their mouth about it. Yeah. Right. Last year and everybody, you know, this Eagles team is, well, no, it's not. We've lost both coordinators are gone. Right. So they're trying, you're trying to learn. You've got new um, guys in different spots moving around. So you, the biggest thing is, is for as, as ugly as some of these games have been that the Eagles have played. Right. They're still continuing to, and, hey, but here we go. It's all the referees fault. Okay. That's all I've heard so far today on social media is the referees did this, did this last night and everything. Really? That seems like it's the go-to thing of how it is. And regards of how that's set up, the, the teams of how they match up is at some point with Philly, it's, it's got to click, right? It's not as if they've been consistently good the entire time at blowing team. Okay. Dallas. Okay. They've been blowing out what they think 15 wins and 58 losses in their, in their games. So last night they finally played somebody. Yeah. Granted Seattle. I don't think they are. They're still on that, that middle tier. Uh, so if they can just consist it right now, if figuring it out, what they're doing for whatever's going on in Philly, that's bad in the first half. And then some reason, the second half, Sean Desai and, and Johnson, figure out okay right it's it but that's that's any sport right you make that adjustment so am i confident what they're doing i'm just confident at some point it's all has to click right i'm hearing it's supposed to rain again in philly that'll be three straight games that they played in the rain if that if that's you know so i mean it seems like everything's going against them this gauntlet of what they're running through right the next week they they come to dallas then the following week they go to seattle i mean i know they flex that game till monday Right. And then they've got, I think, Arizona and then New York twice. So, you know, you look at the stuff. I know your cowgirls have to go to Miami. They've got to go to Buffalo and they've got Detroit coming here. Yep. Right. So, I mean, you look at those things, you know, Seattle, San Francisco still has Baltimore who's chasing the top seed. So, you know, if they don't pull up this weekend out, am I upset? I mean, you always want to win every game. But but you're like, you know, right now the Eagle season's like, oh, here we are. And oh my gosh, we're, you know, we're about to have a heart attack. You've seen the meme and then okay, we pulled it out, type of thing. But people are going, yeah, they're luck, this and that. And it's like they said, okay, one, two, three times. Okay, it's luck. All right. At some point, you've got to figure out that these guys are doing what they need to do. They're figuring something out. And, you know, Jalen's not playing at the caliber he was last year because of, you know, what they had. But Granted, they're still missing pieces. Goddard, hopefully, I don't know if he's going to come back this week. Um, they just signed that Sims, the wide receiver, former wide receiver from the from the uh, from the Redskins. Uh, who? 
uh, Sims, I think the Eagles just signed him, and then uh, a wider six, some six foot five wide receiver they brought hey, in. Uh, oh, it, Julio it, Jones? I mean, no, it's not Julio. no, not Julio Jones. They just signed him yesterday. Uh, Sims is him. Is the guy? I think it's Sims is his last name. But I mean, you know what they're bringing in different stuff. It, you know, like you said, at some point they're going to figure it out. I'm just open for a you know a good game, a, hopefully a repeat of what happened last year, of of being able to get after the quarterback doing what they did. Um, you know, hopefully Bayard starting to figure it out and oh, yeah. uh, being guys being healthy, right? That that's the biggest thing. Can you get can you get through this stuff being healthy? But right, wet sloppy games are just are just awful. Have things some things gone away? Absolutely. You know, people ah oh, they the horse collar, this and that. You've got an official and everything. Everybody wants to be an official. Yeah, it's easy to play Monday morning quarterback, right? You his know, name is, his name is Cam Sims. Cam Sims. Okay. Yes. From so uh, he's Washington. Yep. Yeah. So I mean, you know what? What are they doing? I mean, they bring in different stuff in for. I mean, if talent wise, you line them up and you, and you let them go. I mean, they're the one of the best, most talented teams, especially across the front. That you know the front line of what they've got. It's just a matter of. I think Devontae had a hundred, almost a hundred yards last week and, and AJ didn't have anything. So, you know, you get, you get Goddard back, you get, uh, you know, these guys just to be helped, just figuring it out. So spirit of game, you know, it's going to, I know it's going to be ugly for sure. The fans, Philly fans are already going at it. I've seen them going at it. I mean, I've been a part of it being there. So, but it's, it'll be, it'll be fun to see. And I know they, and then, cause they've had what, 10 days off to play. Yeah. And then your Cowboys have 10 days off to play. So it's almost like, you know, this is lining them up against everything. So I guess the good thing is it's afternoon game or night game next Sunday night and then Monday. But so it's, it'll be fun for sure. But I think the best, the, I think the most, what annoys people the most is when you sit there and you look at Jalen Hurts. Yeah. His demeanor doesn't change the, at all. He goes, he's the, he, uh, he, 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 he limits the distractions. He goes out there and plays the game. So it does. And then Sirianni kind of embodies the city of Philadelphia, how he is. Uh, he's arrogant. Perfect this fit. Perfect fit. He's a. It's like we pulled somebody out of the bleachers like that's out here coaching, but he's he's a part of it. And he loves it, and that's what you want, right? You want the guys. They're going to go to work. They're going to grind it out. That's the blue collar. That's that mentality. That rocky mentality. We're going to go grind it out. Hey, I don't care what you think, right? As long as I'm doing my job and doing the best. Hey, they love you, right? Because there are a lot of fans in other sports where. All right, they said we're jumping off the bandwagon right for a while, and then it becomes something to do. So, for sure. But I'm hopeful, for expecting a good game. You know, these last few weeks should be interesting games for sure. All of these games. You know, I love the the, the division matchups and and seeing some of that. You know, it's you really time to separate everybody, especially in the AFC. It'd be interesting to see. You know, like I said, Baltimore. You know, seeing Baltimore go at it and see. But like I said, they got to go out to San Francisco. Mm -hmm. You know, and then like you said your boys got to play. We got we yeah. got uh, in not Buffalo at Buffalo. Is a yeah. Yeah. But we got to go and we have to go to Seattle. So I'm interested to see if the Eagles stay out West when they leave here and go out and just go to Seattle and do it that way. So. Hmm. Yeah. It's going to be interesting. And um, going back to Otani, apparently he's not a Boris time. He is with uh Nez ba Bailo and creative artist agency. Never heard of him. Yeah. Okay. yeah. But he's not a Boris time. Just to clarify okay. that. Okay. Uh, but it'll yeah. be interesting for sure to see what kind of money he gets. I'm, oh, yeah. yeah. I think he's going to get over $500 million, in my opinion. <sighs> I don't know. I, I think... They better take a big out insurance policy on that one. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, that's going to be interesting. But, uh, yeah, so, so uh, speaking of the Eagles, uh, you're going to like this. Uh, we actually had Fred Barnett on the show and uh, Donovan McNabb on the show, too. Did you? Yeah. yeah they, they, they were awesome. They yeah. Were awesome. I got a chance to meet Donovan a long time. A buddy of mine is uh, Dave Spadaro. Okay. The Eagles insider. So I got a chance to go up there a couple of years ago. Um, actually, when we were playing in Philly, we got a chance to go over to Novacare, oh. have lunch with David Akers, um, and see all those and see those guys. So it's, 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 uh, that, that's a good group. You know, the, the quarterbacks that are built like that, you know, Donovan McNabb's, the Cam Newton's, the bigger guys that can run, yeah. you know, you're not seeing that anymore. You're seeing the smaller guys, um, you know, like a Michael Vick, you know, that I, mean, I was turning on, on uh social media, you know, Randall Cunningham and those guys could throw it 80 yards in the air. Right. Yep. But he could also run like a deer. It could take the hits. Now these guys, they're smaller guys, but they can, they're, you know, they're more compact. I mean, you look at what, uh, 
was it who's in who, is it CJ Stroud? He's in Houston. Yeah, CJ Stroud. I mean, what he's doing, you know, with what they have, Unbelievable. you know, and and you know, so I mean, those guys they're built that way. Uh, uh, Josh, you know, Josh Fields. Uh, Justin Fields, Justin Fields, yeah. Justin Fields. I'm sorry, Justin Fields. You know, Kyler Murray, smaller guys, but Josh Allen can run. Yes, he can. Yeah, that's that's the bigger guys like that. You know, the McNabs, the dudes that are 240, 250 that can run and take the abuse almost like a fullback, mm -hmm. not the ones that are, you know, 6'5, 180 pounds dripping wet. They're going to get, you know, broken up like a China doll because of, you know, how they're built. So, I mean, it's, but, you know, everybody's always looking for the magic, the magic potion or who, who's <laughs> going to be the next, the next guy to come in and, and do this. So, you know, who knows? It'll be interesting to see for sure. Right. I mean, it's, you throw a lot of money at those guys. And I mean, you look at, you know, the Jets. What's his job? Is it Zach Wilson? Is that who it is? Zach Wilson. Yep. Yeah. I mean, what was he? The, was he the second pick or first? Second, second pick in the draft. And the, and you, they, yeah, he was the second pick. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what I mean. I, I, and I think the Panthers messed up this year, too. They, they should have went CJ Stroud, number one. Bryce Young, I don't know. Uh, Bryce That's what I always thought seeing it. I always thought Stroud was the better quarterback of seeing what they shout is ready. He is, you know what? The Texans are even still in the playoff race. Bob. Yeah. Yeah. And the, and the South. Yeah. I just think of some of the, some of the moves they didn't, if they didn't trade away Brandon cooks or something, somebody like that to help uh, what they have that wide receiver. Was it bell uh, bell or hall? They had that which, wide receiver. Little guy. Uh, well, Hopkins. No, 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 Deion, no, he's. You talk about. Uh, I can't think of the guy's name, but he's he's become his kind of go-to guy. Oh, okay. Yeah. I can't think of who it is, but yeah, that's what it's I mean. You're starting a rookie, right? No. Yeah, I think so. But they're starting to, you know, that's what I mean. They're starting to build the right way. D'Amico Ryan's doing a good job with it. Great coach, great coach, heck so, of a Yeah, so that's that'll be that's the thing. Just seeing what these guys, what these teams need. Yeah. Um, so, but it's fun, you know, watching that and watching those guys see them and, and seeing what they can do. It just if they have the guys around them, protect them, but. But that's just, you know, it's a crap shooting itself trying to draft somebody that high quarterback and hoping that something yeah. happens. So, but I, when you have the organization saying that we wanted everybody, somebody else, and you took this, <laughs> you know, there's a problem. And um, yeah, and also uh, I had the opportunity to interview Jaws, Rondra, okay. uh, yep. at, at his golf course. Uh, he's awesome, uh, amazing, awesome person. And uh, and we got to get you on the uh, Kelsey podcast also. <laughs> <laughs> that would be interesting to get on there for sure to hear yeah. those stories and stuff so but uh two more two more things quickly before we let you go uh where, where do you do you think juan soto is gonna be a yankee Poss probably and he's gonna he i think one he's gonna be the one that's gonna leave out of san diego but what are they gonna give up is the question yeah right Right. It's going to be, they don't need, they need arms. I mean, if they couldn't hit whatever the analytics department destroyed that. And I think even judge said that that's not working. Yeah. So it figured out, but you, you've got to get nine guys that play well together. Not nine all-stars like they did in San Diego, because you see where it got them. Mm -hmm. and, so, then, and then uh, one final thing here, would you like to say anything to all the fans, uh, our fans or your, um, your fans? Yeah. Just keep, enjoying every minute of these of the sports you know and having these spirited discussions and you know eventually the old school people it'll, it'll get it'll sort itself out to whatever the way it was you know you won't have guys complaining and everything else it'll be fun it'll be fun again to watch right yeah. it'll be about team not about self so but have fun with it and you know like you said keep listening to the show and having right spread yeah. the word get it out there they, there you have it. Kevin Mench, former MLB outfielder, joined the show today. And, man, fans, thank you to all the fans for asking Kevin some great questions and unique questions, too. Uh, but uh, thank you again, guys. Uh, happy Friday. Please subscribe to the channels. Go uh, uh, listen on Spotify, iHeartRadio. And uh, like I said, continue support. Thank you for that. And and Kevin Mench, thank you for joining the show. Uh, the Great conversation. Keep up the great work. Obviously, we'll stay connected. And uh, good luck to your Eagles this weekend. And Thank uh, you. next next weekend we're not talking. No, I'm just yeah. joking. <laughs> hey, anytime. I'm always I'm always down to get on and have conversation about anything and everything. So yeah, let and, me know. Uh, yeah, but uh, next, uh, like I said, uh, keep up keep up the great work and uh, loved your career. Love the way you played. And like I said, underrated player, man. Kevin Mench was underrated. So everybody, go watch some of his highlights. 
and you'll, you'll, you'll be impressed. But uh, Kevin, thank you again and have a great weekend and, uh, and enjoy your son's basketball tournament. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Look forward to doing it again. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yes, sir.